I first want to give a shout out to all of my subscribers. I want to give a special shout out to all of my new subscribers and those that support me, not just by watching and sharing my videos, but those of you that also support me financially. I really appreciate you. I also want to make a quick comment on certain YouTube channels, rather big YouTube channels that take much of the content that I create and capitalize off of it. There are people, YouTubers, that listen to my videos and then they would take my topics and even scriptures and they will make their videos. I don't mind that. It's an honor to know that people listen, are inspired to make videos on the topics that I speak on. It's a blessing to know that the message is reaching someone. But I'd also appreciate it if you would give the brother a shout out. Just don't bite off of my content and then make a video as if it's your idea, as if you're being inspired to speak on certain topics that you speak on. Knowing that you got that from someone else. So at least give the brother a shout out. And let people know where you got that idea from or where you got that inspiration from. Also, click on the links in the description box. Support this channel. I want to ask a question. Or better yet, I want to give insight to a question that a YouTuber had made. Or better yet, he made a statement. He said that speaking in tongues was of the devil. He said speaking in tongues was of the devil. Now, I made a video and I was saying that people, especially unbelievers, have to really be careful when you start labeling things that you really don't understand. Things of the spirit. It's a dangerous thing to start labeling things of the spirit as of the devil because now you're falling into the red zone of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit saying that it is of the devil. Now, I want to read a few scriptures and give some clarity to speaking in tongues. Now, there's different types of tongues. There's tongues of man. Those are the tongues that people convince themselves to speak. It's an inaudible language. Actually, you can hear it, but it's not a real language. They're just making another, a lot of noise. They're, they're deceiving their own selves because, unfortunately, in many churches especially Pentecostal churches, they are taught that to be saved, you have to be able to speak in tongues. So you got people that would work themselves into a frenzy and start stammering and stuttering, thinking that they're speaking in tongues, but in reality, it's just a bunch of noise. They're deceiving themselves and allowing themselves to be deceived because right after they finish speaking in these tongues, they will leave the church and go back to their wicked lifestyle, whether they're shacking up with someone, they're living in the house with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, unmarried. Or they'll end up in the club or doing drugs or whatever it is that they do. 
They go back to living that foul lifestyle after they finish stammering and mummering gibberish in church, thinking that they're praising the Most High and thinking that they're speaking in tongues. Now, there are the tongues of demons, and I've heard those tongues. And if you have the spirit of discernment, you would be able to discern or tell the difference between you speaking in tongues that's inspired or unctioned by the Holy Spirit versus tongues that are of devils or demons. It has a very unique sound to it. And I've heard those. There were times I was in church services in revivals and the place was like packed. And all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm hearing this tongue and it really grieved my spirit. And immediately, the Spirit of God allowed me to be able to know that those tongues were not of Him, that were not of the Holy Spirit, but they were actual demonic tongues because not only would they be speaking these tongues, but this individual would be, they would fall out, they would become violent in their movement. I mean, people start getting out of the way because they're extremely wild. Um, their face, you can just see it, or the demonic activity in their face. And they're letting out this witch scream and cry. And, and if some of you have been in that service, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They let out this witch blood-girdling scream as if they're in pain, but yet they're speaking in this demonic tongue. So yes, there are people that speak in demonic tongues, and that usually comes from people that are living foul lifestyles, people that's tampering into the unseen realm, and then when they come to church, they're in that type of setting, that spirit that demonic force begins to manifest itself. It comes out just because of the fact, just because of the energy of that service. Okay, so I'm trying to put it in a way where you can understand what I'm saying. So, but then there are tongues where people speak inspired by the Holy Spirit because of the fact that they have the Spirit of God or they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they speak with other tongues. And usually there should be an interpreter in the midst. And if there's no interpreter, according to the Bible, they're supposed to remain silent and speak to themselves because that's their spirit praying to God. And I had a conversation with a family member recently and I was saying that when you're speaking in an unknown tongue, even to yourself, and it's not to edify the body of ch the, the church, it's not to edify the body of the church, then the Bible says you're to speak to yourself because that's your spirit crying out to God. You really don't know what your spirit is saying to God. It's almost like your spirit is snitching on you because you don't know what your spirit is saying to God because it's your spirit that's speaking to God, not you, right? So you really don't know what's being manifested to you. But if you were speaking to the point where you would edify the body, edify the church, then the Most High would make it so that there is an interpreter in the midst to be able to interpret what you're saying to edify the body of Christ. So there's different types of tongues. Now, I have also heard, I've heard this one woman and she was a member at Reverend Jones Church, uh, Grace Jones' father before he passed and 
And me and Reverend Jones, were, we were really good friends. We were different, of different denominations, and we always got together. We talked about the scriptures, and we debated. Um, very good man. I love that dude. And I remember I was in one of their revival services, and I've heard this woman, it was like this tongue. This woman was singing in tongues. Just thinking about it right now just makes the hairs on my arm stand up. This woman was singing in tongue. It was like an angelic tongue. It was the most beautiful thing that I've heard in my life. Little short woman, man. She was like real, uh, her, she was real thin, little short. And I'm looking around the church and I'm hearing this, this, this sound was like music. And I'm trying to figure out where it was coming from. And I looked and I, they had like an altar call and, you know, a lot of people around the altar and this woman had her hands up. Her face was like bright as a light. She was glowing and she was speaking in this, in this angelic tongue. She was just, it was, it was music. It was just this music I've never heard before in my life. It was the most beautiful thing that I've heard in my life. And she was actually singing in tongues. That was nice. That was very beautiful. So there's different types of tongue. So to just say that speaking in tongues is of the devil because you don't understand it. And I expect you not to understand it. And usually when you don't understand something, don't speak on it. You know, you may have your, your, your thoughts and your ideas, but keep that to yourself. Keep it to yourself, because right now, the person that made that statement is in the red zone. He's already blasphemy against the Holy Spirit unaware. So, let's go to the scriptures. I want to start with the book of Luke, the 24th chapter, reading the 49th verse. And it reads as follows. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Now, this is Yeshua speaking. This is before he's taken up. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Now, You can't receive power until you have the Holy Spirit of Yah. I'll repeat that. You can't say that you have the power of God unless you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, that word tarry means to wait. And the disciples were instructed to wait in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. In the church, in the Pentecostal church, the old Pentecostal church, and even there are some today that still hold this tradition where they tell people in order to receive the Holy Spirit of God, you have to tarry. And they define tarrying as clapping their hands, repeating Jesus until they fall into a frenzy until their words start coming together. And then they say they received the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues, which is completely false. Now, for those of you that can't understand what I'm saying, they put these people, grown folks and even young people, and they would have these people on the altar, man, for like hours sometimes, for the longest and they're like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And they're clapping their hands. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And then the words start coming together. And then they throw their hands in the air. And you know, and they're supposed to be speaking in tongues. But that's not what it is. They work themselves into a frenzy. Is that of the devil? No. That's of themselves. They convinced themselves to do that because members of the church, the pastor told them that they had to tarry for the Holy Ghost. And tarry means to wait. 
So Jesus told his disciples, says, I send the promise of my Father, which is the Holy Spirit. I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, in other words, wait ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That's that spiritual power, that Holy Ghost power. And you can't be a witness until you receive power. You can't be a witness. You can't be a witness for Christ until you receive the power of the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, how can you be a witness? What are you witnessing or being a witness to or for? So you can't be a witness until you receive the Holy Spirit. I want to read another scripture from the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, reading the 17th and the 18th verse. And it reads as follows. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, the new tongues could be interpreted as you have a new, you used to be a cursor, you used to curse and you used to have a, have a foul mouth and now you're speaking a new tongue. You don't curse no more. You don't speak vulgarity anymore. And then it could also be new tongues as you being a believer receive the Holy Spirit and you're speaking with tongues, your spirit praying to the Most High, or you speaking in tongues and you're edifying the body of Christ because there is an interpreter in the mix. And I'm going to explain that interpreter later on in the next scripture that I read. Or it could be a new tongue that you don't speak until you go to the other side. Until you pass from this life to the next life. And you're given another tongue. So there's different ways that, that men, that people in the church interpret the new tongues. And then you have those that believe the new tongue to be the G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-G-
they shall take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. These are things that the people are unaware of. For example, I think it was uh, Paul was picking up some sticks. Or was it Peter? In the book of Acts. And a serpent jumped out of the fire and clung on to him. It was a venomous snake. And the people that lived in that town were saying among themselves, they were doing the same thing that people today do. You know, oh, what did he do wrong? He must be a criminal. You know, for that snake to latch on his arm, that venomous snake. And the Bible says, after they watched the great wild and they saw nothing happen to him, they then begin to start saying that he was a god because it had no effect on him. But he wasn't looking for that venomous snake to bite him. It just happened to bite him. And if you drink of anything deadly, unaware, just think of the number of times you were at a restaurant and you got up and left your drink on the table, your soda or water, and you went to the bathroom and came back and someone could have laced it with something. They could have put something in it. Family members, friends, girlfriends, boyfriends could have put things in your drink and in your food. Unaware and you ate it or drank it and nothing happened to you. Because you are a believer in Christ. So again, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if any, and if they drink anything deadly, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, the last and final scripture that I want to read, and it's quite lengthy, so... Uh, be patient, and I'm going to try to go through this as quick as I can. But this is where the apostles received the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with new tongues. And it's taken from the book of Acts, the second chapter, reading the first to the 21st verse. And I'm going to try to go through this as quick as I can. And it reads as follows. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. In other words, they were all in one agree. They're in the same mind. They were agreeing upon the same thing. They were with one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, any one of you that's been in that type of spiritual service in the church, when people are singing and praising the Most High, or if the preachers are preaching, and then all of a sudden in the spirit you can hear what sounds like a bunch of thunder or noise. And this usually happens before you start seeing people at the same time would jump up, begin to start, you know, praising the most high, shouting, as we call shouting, some running around the church. Uh, you have some that's crying and just praising the most high. And, and it's an experience that you really can't describe. I can try to describe it to the best of my ability, but it's, but it's hard. And then you hear people speak in tongues. And I've also been in services where there was an interpreter and prophecy came through as a result of someone speaking in tongues. And the pastor that I had at the time, whenever someone starts speaking in tongues and, and this woman or guy is just speaking, he usually just wait and he'll listen. You know, he, he was very in tune, but he would sit there, he would, he would wait. Right? And then you'll hear somebody else that will start speaking. And then this woman or this guy will begin to either prophesy or 
um, they would start interpreting what this person was saying, you know? Uh, and then there are times where the woman is speaking and it just, just fades out. You know, he'll listen and then it just, she just, everything just goes silent. And then, you know, he'll either uh, dismiss the service or whatever else is going on. But I've been in services, man, where um, that sound, and, it, and it's not an audible sound that everyone would hear. And again, if you've been in that type of service, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. And um, it, it, it's, it's amazing. It is truly amazing. So that's why when people that don't understand, you shouldn't speak on things like that, that you don't understand. If you don't understand it, don't speak on it. But speaking in tongues is not of the devil. Uh, there are demonic tongues. Again, there are demonic tongues, but it's not of the Holy Spirit. So the second verse says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, divided tongues. That cloven means divided tongues, like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. In other words, as the Holy Spirit allowed them to speak, they spoke. It did not say as Satan or demons gave them utterance. This is not referring to a demonic tongue. And I'll read that fourth verse again. And they were all filled. Being very specific, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling. Now, this is given in description of who was in the mix because not only church folk were there. It weren't just the apostles that were there. It's getting ready to tell you who was there and who witnessed this. And you had some unbelievers in the mix that became believers as a result of what they've experienced. So in many cases, it's not so much as for the believers, but it's for the unbelievers. Now, in the sixth in the, fifth, in the fifth verse, it says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised about, the multitude came together. In other words, you had the news traveled. And once that news traveled, people, unbelievers, the multitude came together. They came to see what was going on. And they were confused. It says, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded. Confounded means confused. Because that every man, in other words, every man within that multitude heard them speak in his own language. So the multitude heard these men, these foreigners, speaking in their language. I'll read that sixth verse again. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? In other words, these are all Galileans. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? In other words, they heard these foreigners speaking in their language. And it's going to tell them what they were speaking. And see, being that these men knew what these Galileans were saying in these unknown tongues, and the tongues were unknown to the Galileans. 
They were just speaking. They didn't know what they were saying. They were just speaking according to the Holy Spirit. They were speaking according to the Spirit of God. A foreign language. And the people that were visiting there, the visitors, the unbelievers, heard them speaking in their language. And it says, how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? And then it lays out what nations were there. The ninth verse says, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea in Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia, uh, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. The 11th verse says, Crates and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So they were speaking the wonderful works of God in these foreigners' language, and they understood. In other words, there were interpreters in the midst, and the interpreters were those people that were from those places that I just named. And what did they hear? It says, we do hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. And in the 12th verse it says, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? In other words, what does this mean? Others mocking. Now, this is the guy that made this comment about tongues is of the devil. It says, Others mocking. There were some that were mocking that said, these men are full of new wine. In other words, they're drunk. They're drunkards. We hear this today. There are people that go to Pentecostal churches, either apostolic churches or even Church of God of Christ, just to see people shout. And in today's time, they go there with their cell phones and cameras and they record it and then make mockery on the internet. Because they see young people, instead of out there killing themselves, they're shouting in church. They're dancing. And they make mockery of these young people that's shouting in the house of God. And not out there killing each other. So in the 13th verse it says, others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. In other words, they're drunk. But Peter, standing up in the, with the 11, lifted his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. In other words, this was prophesied a long time ago. Just like we read the book of Revelation, we read the scriptures and it tells us what's going to come. And now we are experiencing in this time what was prophesied. So the 16th verse says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in these days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day 
of the Lord come. And the 21st verse says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So again, it is speaking of tongues of the devil according to what I had just read. So it's very dangerous for you to make that claim and you don't understand what you are saying. And I'll make it clear one more time that there are different tongues. There are tongues of the devil. There are demonic tongues. But when it comes to the Holy Spirit, it has an extremely unique tongue. The Bible says, again, you have to have an interpreter in the mix. Otherwise, you speak to yourself because that's your spirit speaking to God. And unless you can interpret what your spirit is saying, your spirit could be snitching on you. See, that's how God knows his people. See, God has, has something within each of us that's able to communicate with him. Things that we don't understand. See, so God has a system that's built inside you, in your soul, in your spirit, that communicates back and forth in a language you don't understand. You have no knowledge on what God is saying about you. See, that's God's black box. You know how planes have a black box and when it crashed, they pull the black box to see what happened? They can tell what type of communication was going on. They can tell everything about, what, about that plane. Well, that's the way it is with God. He's got a black box in our soul to tell on us, to tell our true motive and intention. See, we can deceive each other. We can lie to each other, but we can't lie to God. See, because that black box is reading, is constantly reading um, what you feel and what you think inside. So even when you don't speak something, but yet you're doing something totally different, well, God knows different. He knows you better than you know yourself. So when your spirit begins to speak to God and you can't interpret what your, what your spirit is saying to the most high, you're telling on yourself. And again, that's how God knows his people. So I'm going to end it right there. But feedback, tell me what you think. Click on the link, support this channel. And if you happen to use any of my information here, and you decide to put it back in a different way to make it appear that these are your thoughts and your ideas, at least give the brother a shout out. So feedback, tell me what you think until next time. I'm fearless.